Hey, good morning, Animal Valley. <laughs> good morning, uh, Welcome. Everyone. Welcome to the Zen Den. That's right. We are live at the Zen Den. Behind us is our river. We call it the 10th Street. It's 10th Street West, and we have six lanes of traffic and a service road. And we're just situated far enough back. This is the porch, the front porch. So you'll get to see the morning traffic flowing behind us, free flow, unobstructed. And since we are organic and live and you streaming on the air, brought to you by many sponsors, it's, um, we don't know, sirens may go by, dogs may bark, it's organic. already it's happened. It's organic. <laughs> it's organic here in Zen Den. It's just our neighborhood. It's Indian summer, autumn, fall has fell, and good Thursday morning to us all. We're going to welcome On the Air TV, broadcast us nationally, that, that's special, thank you. Of course, Ustream which is where we, we start at. And, of course, we're embedded on ilivetoday.com, which is, is it weird to look at the light rather than looking at the camera? That's right. Um, so we're excited to be here. We had a great show planned for you today. Uh, we're going everywhere from um, from NASA uh, Social to um, uh, to Gail Minogue coming up this weekend, an incredible neurologist. We'll get into that. We've got lots of videos. Um, we got, uh, what else have we got here? We have Tehachapi, Feast oh, at the Farm. Yeah, kind of a recap of that. Uh, Lancaster Insurance is going to uh, educate us a little bit more about what's happening in, uh, is it November? November 7th is open enrollment uh, for Medicare. Open enrollment. In other words, pre-existing conditions, it don't matter. Out the window, you're in. And Bob Finberg is the man. He's the independent agent here in the Antelope Valley. And he knows he knows his fizzle. Lancaster Insurance. Bob Finberg and his staff, excellent at what they do. A.B. Florist, uh, also known as A.B. Nice. We have... Avon's Furniture doing his part. One of the events happening this Saturday is the Greek Chronicles. Bring your toga, wear your toga, and your good sense of humor, and enjoy the great food. Chef Anne is known for her food feast there at the Hellenic Center, and Saturday is the Greek Chronicles. So dress up, get your toga, toga on. Togas! <laughs> That's kind of strange, isn't it? It's not a Bellucci thing, is it? You know, it's Greek Chronicles. you got to go. got to go. got to be there. <laughs> Guaranteed to have great food mm -hmm. prepared by Chef Ann and Bob Turner, who owns Avon's Furniture. Uh, he'll be on site. Chris Calaba from the Graphic Experience, too. We have a little short, um, Nothing But Bling, recently had a deal on local living. And so we have a little short to show you about them as well. Roll it out, producer Jim. Jim Greenleaf. Da -da. My co-host, I'm Marva Greenleaf. She's the executive producer. <laughs> I live today is what we proclaim. And her favorite thing to me is, Jim, I just made an executive decision. Yes. Well, they have to, now and again, you have to make an executive yeah. decision. So there you go. Telling, telling on yourself is the best way to go. Okay, let's begin this day with our trek uh, to Tehachapi uh, for, for Feast on the Farm, uh, which was a very neat situation. We actually had dinner out in the actual farm in the orchards uh, with the with the apples at the, at the, whose orchard was it? It was Moster's Farms in Tehachapi. There were three chefs that came in to prepare local food that's grown and produced right there in Cummins Valley in Tehachapi. Cheryl Hughes, the owner of the Whole Wheatery, which is right across the street, Whole Wheatery. We're missing you, but loving you from across the street. Cheryl was one of the sponsors of that evening, and we had a feast at the farm on a September evening. Here it is. Perfect. See how perfect it is? I'm not hearing it. Huh? I can hear you fine. Don't we? Much fun to be out in the farm. I mean, just to meet new people, talk to new people, learn what apple is what, how it grows, what it does, who eats it besides <laughs> us. A few squirrels, a few birds. Um, we're getting Worms. ready to taste local ostrich. <laughs> And we're going to have local pig, and we're going to have some grass-fed beef, heirloom tomatoes. All right here in Tehachapi Grown, and we are consuming it yes. at Mosner's Farms on this beautiful, almost autumn. Yes. Not quite. In another week or so, we'll flip into autumn. Harvest time at the farm. 
Yeah, so all the way from the farm to the fork, and we'll tell about it. Yep, feast at the farm. See you in What's going on tonight is uh, we've got a, a great wonder, group of wonderful people here that are out here to enjoy the beautiful environment of uh, Tatchby and, and the Cummings Valley. And we're here to celebrate the food that's raised here through a wonderful meal cooked by three wonderful chefs and, and, and served with great wine. And it's just uh, one of the most beautiful places to be on this earth right now is right here in the Cummings Valley at uh, Mosner's Ranch. Who are the three chefs? The three chefs, um, our main chef is, is Rich Mead. He owns uh, Sage uh, down in uh, Newport and also the Canyons in Anaheim Hills. And then Yannick Marchand, who's a wonderful chef. He's a personal chef to stars and those sorts in Beverly Hills. And then our dessert is being done by uh, Robert uh, Wiesherm. And uh, he is a four-time uh, book author and the author of a best-selling book called The, Des the uh, Dessert Architect. And that's who he is. He's a dessert architect, so we'll have a wonderful dessert from him. So how's the turnout tonight? The turnout is fantastic. Um, we've got a, a great mixture of the farmers that have actually grown these products that are up here, as well as uh, as people from Lancaster and Palmdale, LA, uh, down to Palm Springs and Bakersfield that have all come up here on top of the hill for this wonderful, beautiful environment. Now I understand the Alliance here in the valley with whole weedery. Oh, well, Whole Weedery is one of our sponsors for the event. They're just one of the greatest stores you could go to. Cheryl is just a wonderful woman. Well, there you go. We're back from Tehachapi. Well fed. That was amazing. The food was incredible. In the desert, the high desert, we have such great weather. And that was just up the hill. The Tehachapi Mountains is just a 40-minute ride. They have wind farms up there. It's very rural. So wherever you're tuning in from all over America, um, uh, uh, this is a neat place. You should think about visiting. Uh, they had the big train loop that, and, and all kinds of stuff. But the, it's on a volcanic land. So so the, the grapes, the everything. The food is amazing. Yes. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> That's a big well in the ocean over there. <laughs> we love our neighbors. So is, is someone you want to say hi to? Let's tune in. You know, hello America, hello world. It is such a great um, time to be alive. It's invigorating. And just spending time out at NASA, uh, what a discovery. I have lived in this valley for 25 years and have deep, close, personal friends associated with NASA. And I learn more every day. The more I know, the more I know. I just don't know. This thing called discovery keeps me well engaged, invigorated in life. So there we were, NASA Social, yesterday. Well, actually, actually, we were at the Board Trade at, at their monthly meeting. And just so happened, the guy I spent two and a half days with out there at NASA Dryden with NASA Social is, is a friend of yours. Well, the center director, David McBride, he's the youngest director ever appointed for NASA. And he and his wife, Dr. Vicki McBride, she's a local chiropractor, healer. Um, she has just, both of them have loved this community for, since 1982 is when they moved to the Antelope Valley and have been a part of the healing community. And then Jim with uh, NASA tagged it as Healing Space. So David is really divinely appointed as the director at this amazing, we closed the chapter on the shuttle, which it was important to close that chapter because now we have many other pioneering well, efforts. Here's the key word now. You know, you know, FAA is in charge of our airspace. And, United and, States of America. Yeah, so, so, so NASA has to deal with that. It's a whole different ball of wax. But when we talk space exploration, it's going to take international cooperation. Mm -hmm. and that's the key word David has shared with us, that how this is going to work in the future, because here's what we're doing, just so we can do with the state parks. Um, we privatized everything, and now we're privatizing NASA. Um, NASA's still going to be in charge. Um, you don't have a turn down here? 
I can. Just there you go. Like Thank you. That. Okay, Push so 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 with that in mind, the next step is is these joint. Um, uh, NASA is so involved. It's, it's their structures, their technology, uh, but they privatized. So we have we have uh, three different companies um, here in Lancaster. It's um, um, uh, geez, I can't think of, but there's two of them there. And, and Richard Branson's involved. I mean, hey, Richard, if you're watching, love you, dude. He sometimes watches, you know. Um, imagine him on the airplane. Like, Shh. Sees what he wants to see. <laughs> they talked about me. But anyway, it is an international community, an international cooperation, this thing called airspace. And it is the unknown and we're doing it for the greater good. Now, NASA, too, has such a pulse on the climate changes that are happening. And um, so th the, the cracking and breaking off of these giant craters at, in the Antarctic. They witnessed it. And Arctic, yeah. So they are concerned as well. These satellites that we're all depending upon, these up in airspace, could easily be affected. And then we just, we just want to try and write and move forward in the highest optimistic greater good. What they say is too is that is that it's not what happens in space. It's really not. It's about the projects they bring back back here and how we can apply them to us and better our lives. All the data. It's just amazing how we can. It is applicable. Uh, it's timely. It's global. It's cosmos. And so to have NASA last week and carrying over and then Gail Minogue's Divine Design, dealing with sacred geometry. We are really flying with the eagles. And speaking of flying with the eagles, the first piece we're going to show about NASA is, is probably uh, just a stamp on how social uh, networking is taking over this part of the government. Uh, JPL, uh, when, when, the, when the rover landed on Mars, all of a sudden that rover started, uh, uh, was it, what is it called, Curiosity? It has a personality, and you get to uh, just engage in the whole excitement, the, the launching of it, the success of it, the magnitude of the project. And it begins up here, and that's why we want to instill science and math and creativity in our preschools and just start at the very base of our society and build this up for mankind. These two young ladies from JPL spent the two days of, with me out there and just phenomenal ladies how they focus on giving this 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 curiosity this this rover on mars a personality and it just doesn't say i'm picking up a rock you know they describe it and they make it they make it uh, make it funny uh, it's it's a great thing but anyway let's go now to 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 nasa social uh, endeavor uh, where these two lovely ladies and they're very special I'm going to share with you just what they do, why they do, at JPL. The next speaker that uh, was referenced earlier by the center director is the historian here at Dryden. It is Christian Gelser, excuse me, yeah. Uh, let me introduce Christian Gelser. Thank you. More research that we've done here. I'm trying to put context into this here. Um, fly by wire. We took those guys who worked on the lunar landing research vehicle, right? That looked strange vehicle that had the analog computers in it. Um, one of the things you need to understand about that vehicle is that it had, th there were no mechanical parts connecting the pilot who sat in the front with the engine or with any of the thrust systems on the vehicle. Okay, well, organically, I downloaded the wrong video. That was the historian of NASA. How many videos you have for NASA so far, Jim? 22. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I was close. This is one of 22. And these two uh, women who know and love and embrace jet propulsion laboratories and all the excellence and ex the fun, you know, it, there has to be a blur of the line between work and play. Well, or no, I, I've been told by some people that I haven't worked a day in my life. I just play a lot. There we go. Little road rage. Thank you. How's that? Road rage out there. Oh, How's that going? Oh, neighbors, be kind. <laughs> the river's wild out here. Okay. <laughs> and once again, thank you all for tuning in all over the country. Uh, it's, it's great to have you here in Southern California, just a short distance from NASA and Edwards and Tehachapi and the beach. We're all here. LAX but, is just uh, maybe not even 80 miles away. You know, as you know, our, our branding uh, is uh, Young Love After 50 because God bless the crooked road that led me straight to Marva Greenleaf. Um, amazing, amazing thing. But we think a lot of baby boomers, and we call them baby bloomers, 
have shut down. So what we want to do is revitalize. We want them to waken up. We want them to enjoy life again. A lot of things with the empty nest and and just uh, re redoing your life, starting over. It's, it, it, it's a tough thing to do in this day. But we're at that age now. We're doing it. So um, I talked to Dave McBride about NASA Social. Uh, Chris Biker talks to him about A.V. Nice. My dear, you went right up to him and interviewed him about young love after 50. You know, it's so much fun to bring love into the room um, because these men, we take very serious, we, we take care of serious business day in and day out. But just giving room, making room for this thing called love and just the mutual admiration. We've watched each other grow up and oh, maturity is such a wonderful thing to witness. So let's just keep growing up. What did, when, when you walk up today, what do you say to you? Don't make me look bad. Oh, you know, no, don't get me in trouble. I don't know why people think that I bring in trouble, but I don't. I just bring a little bit of joy. You know, I love, I love when you start to interview somebody, and they all look like that. How is she taking me down? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this light bulb goes off, oh. and they get involved, and they come to your level. It's such a neat thing, it's, Well, and acknowledging one another, because none of us do it alone. It may feel like very lonely work, so but if, we do not do this alone. So we want to go on the road with Young Life 50. Um, we're looking for about 40 Gs. If you get an idea, or if you're, you're a company like a Little Debbie or something, and, and, and you'd like to reach out to us, uh, thank you very much. Um, we, we love that. Uh, of course, our pharmacy, the whole weedery, has a lot of product that we love. And we're going to go down uh, one of these days here pretty soon to the, um, what's it called? The Remini? Oh, we have so many adventures ahead of us. There's a company in Topanga um, called Pure Remedy, a woman is um, continuing the ancient shamanic healing herbs that are available to us with our trees and our barks and just amazing what God has provided for us to stay whole and to be able to use this divine design effectively in, in the journey of life. So Pure Remedy, it's an ointment, a, well not even ointments, it's pure herbal it's the Indian. Our skin is our largest eliminative organ. So we want to allow it to release, which would be sweat, and um, and then to replenish it and nourish it, cleanse it, and uh, clarify it so that it can work for you, eliminating all the toxins that come in and through the body every day. So that's what we're all about. So let's go now at the Board of Trade yesterday. Thank you, uh, Vicki Medina, uh, the president there, since opened our and allows us to go in and interact with the, her guests, with uh, David McBride as, as Marva Greenleaf talks young love after 50 with the man in charge of NASA Dryden. <laughs> And I know with Young Love is that we get to decide every day to bring our best, just yes. doing our best in this day. And NASA, being the center director for NASA, you got to do, you got to stay on that game. You're surrounded by excellence. But it's easy when you've got a great group of people to work with and bring that energy with them and an exciting chunk of work to do. And and a great family to support me at home. Oh, you do have a great family as a beautiful wife, Dr. Vicki McBride, a healer in our community. Yes. Since at least 1985, if not earlier than that. She's a local chiropractor, so welcoming you to the Antelope Valley is not necessary. No. You are fully her. planted here. Yes. Okay, and facing the empty nest. Mm -hmm. That's just a whole nother chapter for all of us, isn't it? It's good. It's a good time to be yes. alive. We get to watch the next generation take flight, and then we get to fall back in love and just carry that companionship on through our lifetimes. Now, one more thing about the robotics, because we know robotics is play. That's taking play and just allowing the mind to create these phenomenal Mars rovers, Curiosity. And locally, there's even a five-year-old robotics team yes, that's being Lego, launched. Lego robotics. Yes, the Lego robotics, middle school robotics. So that too is bringing up the next generation. Well, it's teaching children how to use technology to solve problems. It's not. It can be fun. It can be games, and, and everything you do should be fun and games. It should be. But some you can play. also do. 
a lot of constructive work with them too. And so the next generation coming up will think nothing of robotics, uh, just like uh, the current generation thinks nothing of cell phones. When we were growing up, you never had a cell phone, you never had a computer, you didn't think about it. But yeah, our children can't imagine life without that. And so the next generation will think about robotics and putting machines together and having them solve problems is just a normal part of life. It is. It's just experimenting and playing and learning in this school of life. Thank you, David McBride. You're very welcome. Being a wise man choosing Thank Vicky. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it just dawned on me, this robotics, it's right up there next to all of the Apple products, all that branch, it's, it all weaves together. But this thing called robotics, I know for the middle school, Adrian Holmes is a mentor, one of the robotics leaders, mentors in the Antelope Valley. And um, for her team this year, it's uh, Senior Solutions. It is absolutely team building. Uh, but it's just using this mutual feed of curiosity and teamwork and then you plant the seeds of you know what would you bring to the table as a senior citizen and it was so much fun to hear these middle schoolers talk about false teeth and loneliness and you know falling down and not being able to get up and then begin to create through Legos whatever it is that they would see being able to be a solution for seniors. That's how far-reaching it can be and generational that it is. And it's these passionate hearts, OMG, the passion in the heart from the two chicks down at JPL. Hey, I found it. Yeah, oh, you weren't gonna play it? Let's do it. Okay, from Legos uh, with uh, uh, making robots to the actual robots landing, landing on, on the moon. Mars. How is this full cycle what? So I tell you what, these two girls, Turn me on for life. Okay. Well, it just does. It's invigorating. The, the uh, It's intoxicating, the enthusiasm. Thank you for being here. I want to just, uh, before I wrap up the social media aspect, I really want to get a little perspective from our phenomenal team of social media folks at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory who we're really lucky to have here. I find, I find Mar at Mars Curiosity the most compelling account we have. <laughs> uh, the flagship account, of course, at NASA is always going to be needed because we can put stuff out for all the whole agency. But it's really interesting to put personality into something where there was none. We NASA has a tendency to suck the fun out of things and everything we do. And we put a video up and like, oh my God, it seemed cooler until I saw this video. And but uh, they get it and they do it right. And so we can all learn from them. And so let me turn it over to Stephanie and Courtney. Oh man, hard to follow an introduction like that. <laughs> um, so I endeavor OB one hundred five. This this is why we're here. But. Uh, John asked us to say a few words about Mars Curiosity, which is, this is now what, Sol 44? Hang on, there's an yes, app for that. So um, <laughs> one ton of awesome landed on the red planet, um, 10.32 p.m. August 5th, uh, mm -hmm. live tweeting in the first person. Um, we are two thirds of the team who oversee that account and, uh, you know, Sucking the fun out of things. How's it? How how can you suck the fun out of one ton space robot that has ten science instruments, including a rock vaporizing laser on its head? Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, we like her. If if you come down to JPL and we encourage you to do that, we give free tours uh, all year long, and we have an open house in the spring. You can meet our teams. You can come to Mission Control. You can um, go to the Mars Yard, and you can see where we test the rover's stunt doubles. Um, it, it's, tr it's true. It's true. There are there are two full sized rovers. One of them is part for part, except for the plutonium 238 powered, uh, you know, power source. We, we don't keep plutonium at JPL. Um, it's got a, a very, very long extension cord that comes out of the back of it. That proved to not be feasible for Mars, um, but we can do that. We can do that at the lab. And then we have another model that's uh, three eighths weighted. And um, that one's a driving model. It doesn't have a brain. And so it's called Scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. But as far as the social media is concerned, um, at this point, like through landing and now on the surface, it's about sharing the, our journey of discovery. And so as news happens on Mars, um, 
15.7 minutes later, we can find out about it here on Earth, and mm -hmm. then we turn around and share it with you guys immediately on Twitter. Yeah, speaking of which, there is actually a Curiosity Telecom that is happening in about 30 minutes. Not that we want you to watch it. It will be recorded yeah. and available on demand on Ustream.tv slash NASA JPL later. Yeah, but it brings up a good point in that people are always asking, what's next for NASA? Well, Curiosity is a two-year mission. That's the prime mission. And she's going to be doing so much on the surface of Mars. And you guys should all tune in. Yeah. Yeah. So stay with us on the road to Glen Elg and the lower slopes of Mount Sharp, which is a five-kilometer tall sedimentary mountain in the middle of Gale Crater. And this rover is going to climb through Mars history. Yes, Carrie Ann. How do you feel about that sarcastic rover? I think she's I hilarious. Think <laughs> that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we chuckle. We chuckle. Okay. It's good. I, you know, I think that Mars Curiosity says things that NASA JPL can't say, right. and sarcastic rover says things that Mars Curiosity can't say. Mm -hmm. So it's, we're all storytellers, and we're all sharing this journey together. Do you, do you say let's do a science at all? Have we have not. No. I personally do a science every now and then, but that's in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I just want to thank you because as an educator, you know, I feel it's my job to get, take these stories that the kids aren't aware of them and bring them to the classroom, and Curiosity is one of them. I'm going to the JPL workshop at ASU next weekend. So oh, awesome. I'm super excited to Great. take what I learned from that back to my kiddos, and I think they're really, really good. So thank you. That's Quite wonderful. That's great. <clears throat> yes. As social media has exposed you to, to, to mass media by what you're doing, how is the celebrity going? <laughs> uh, I feel like the ghost of Andy Warhol is floating next to us going 15 minutes, 14 minutes. Um, no, we, we joke. Sometimes we feel like carnival barkers for, for science and engineering. The mission is inside the tent. And if we're unique in that, oh, they're, they're women and they're tweeting and they're playing the part of a robot mm -hmm. online, um, people know oh, what? And they want to pay attention to that and the crazy song lyrics and movie quotes that we drop in the tweets. If that hooks people's attention for two minutes, they might go in the tent and see the, the real science and engineering that's happening in there. And, you know, mm -hmm. we're vectors. We're helping to try to take the public and help them know what's going on with space science and engineering at JPL, and that includes this awesome Mars rover. So, yeah, it is it. a bit surreal though to be tweeting with people like Steve Martin or Britney Spears or people that you normally don't from a space or science Twitter account. But we like to say that you know anything that we can do to get people interested in this account, and some people weren't aware that there was a rover on the surface of Mars. I mean, mm -hmm. there's now three of them. Yeah, and two working. Yeah. And two working, yeah. So, you know, if landers, rovers, and if rovers pass on them? Right, working still. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so opportunity and curiosity in different parts of Mars yeah. and spirit and uh, sojourner mm -hmm. right. are waiting for us to build science museums around them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, nerd trip, nerd pilgrimage to Mars. Yes, we're all on. about it. <laughs> Pilot getaway to Mars. Yes, good. Okay, I'm glad we're all on board. Yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. I'm, I'm not in education at all. I'm more in uh, communications. But I'm wondering if any of the universities reached out to you to try to figure out like coursework to do from the some of the either social media experience you guys have or um, some of the the information that you're getting from. It's funny you know, that you asked that. Um, I took a call yesterday from the University of Wisconsin at Madison from a science communication educator there who asked if we would Skype with her class, like an upper division class of, of science communicators. So we, it, we haven't had that conversation yet, but yeah, absolutely. And, and we, we will. piggybacking on that, what about other government agencies? Because I actually worked for the Port of San Diego and being, um, you know, government agencies are terrified of everything social media, even though you know it's been going on for four years. But um, I'm always fighting that battle. So, what about it, in, your what timing about is yeah, impeccable? Timing. <laughs> um, Monday was Monday. Monday. We, yeah, we did. We um, were connected remotely with uh, the, the GSA. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so government. Social, help me out with my three-letter acronym. There are so many TLAs. G GSA. Yeah, it wasn't GSA Senate? Yeah. Okay. Government Services Administration. There we go. Okay. okay. So it was 150 government officials who work in social media who were in D.C. and we joined them virtually and we presented a case study about 
everything we've been doing with the mission. Yeah. So best best practices, yeah. Yeah. how do we get our information? How do we you know work with the scientists and engineers, the experts? How do we get that information cleared for public release? How do we work together? Right. And then how do we have that conversation? Because it can't all be pushed. Right. If you guys don't like being talked at, says the woman talking at you. Um, <laughs> It has to be a conversation, and so we strive for a 50% 50 50% of our tweets mm -hmm. from any of our accounts to be responses, so at mentions, at replies, and um, I think it's that level of engagement where people can come to us and interact, you know, with the NASA Center, with mm -hmm. NASA headquarters, with missions, get their questions answered. That that's the heart of it. That's where it, it really pays off for everybody, for us, and I think for the public. Because we want to know what's, what people are excited about, what they're confused by. If, yeah. if there's a lot of confusion that comes back on a tweet, we know that we need to do a better job in our newsroom. So maybe that's going to inspire mm -hmm. a new video that our videographers make, or a new news article, or a new photo gallery that we can then go ahead and share mm -hmm. via social media to help further enthusiasm and engagement. Yeah. I just want to say like one of my favorite things has been you know, flipping through Instagram and having pictures from Mars show up. From the, uh, the, you know, you're like, here's a friend. Oh, look, there's Disney World. Look, there's a sunset. Look, you know, here's somebody eating ramen. And boom, here's a photo from Mars. I just want to thank you for that. It's just fantastic. Well, the Instagram is actually a fan. But <laughs> that one's not official. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. we're oh. we're going to reach out to the Instagram people, but mm -hmm. the person who is um, Instagramming as at Mars Curiosity is not one of us. But there's nothing wrong with fan content. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen all the YouTube videos of like the descent. So many of those have been made by fans, and they have hundreds of thousands of views. And I see that as a win for the agency. It's not just what we're doing, it's what everybody else is making with our content. We're all about open data, right? So we're gonna take our data sets and we're gonna put them out there and see what you guys do. We're gonna put all of our photographs out there. And if somebody wants to take an entire month, like this one fan did, and make a 30 frame per, se per second interpolated descent video. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, <laughs> thank you, sir, it's gorgeous. It's not, we wouldn't do it necessarily, not because we would want to, but okay, it shot at four frames per second. We're gonna show you the four frames per second because that's the science. That's the, re that's the data, that's the original data set, and we'll put that out there. But if somebody wants to take that data and make something beautiful, we're happy to do it. And now we're happy to get off the stage. Thank you for being here. I wanna just, uh, before I wrap up this. Well, there you have it. Isn't that great? I mean, what about time well spent and these two women just so enthused and the power of the words, you know, a journey of discovery, what's next, this thing, uh, transparency, which is um, the perception of open data that what I bring to it can easily be collaborated with and transformed into something even further reaching. That's the community part of it. Reminds me, remember Mystery Science 3000? I, where, am, I did voiceovers on it. Well, I just, that's what it reminds me of. Ken, I'm gonna find Ken Stovall. Ken Stovall, he did it at the, at the Hollywood Cantina. And yes, I was part of it. Go ahead. Mystery Science Theater 3000 that's was right just there. my way of spending time. I'm gonna find some of those old reruns and enjoy and see that. My, you hear my voice? And <laughs> away so there we were with NASA, and at the same time, we had two. Antelope Valley Press reporters here at the Zen Den. One, uh, Bill Warford. Great article, thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, about Jim's involvement with uh, iLife Today and, uh, and NASA Social. Social. <laughs> and then for myself personally, so heartfelt eternal gratitude to Bill Warford and Karen Mashiro and Samantha McConnell right there at the Valley Press. It's so good to see you and your team, all the staff there at the Valley Press, the different events that we choose to go to. So many events, so little done. Isn't well, that the truth? I, I know that yesterday an opportunity to thank everybody through Larry Grooms. Oh, and Larry Grooms was at the Board of Trade on Tuesday. and hey, We have much to be hopeful about. And even though we're all stepping into the unknown and we're just going to hold it together, make certain that we're all fed and uh, looked after a true heartfelt community we have here in the Antelope Valley.
And Thanks. Valley Press, you have been at, at the pulse of it for years and continue to be. And I personally thank you for all that you've brought to our community. You know, um, one of our sponsors is bringing the community together in a big, huge way. You know, money is so tight now. And with opportunities to go places at, at, a, at, a, at a half price or 90% off or, or whatever, local living has stepped to the plate. We thank you for being part of the show and encouraging us. And, and tell me, um, uh, Marva, what's going on with local living? <laughs> I love everything local living. <laughs> Before I loved Jim, I loved local living. <laughs> Localliving.com. Because I sure uh, like to make the most out of my dollars. And I still need a quality of life that I can afford. So uh, massages and spa services and play there's a mud run and a barbecue happening. <laughs> and then it's uh, national uh, products, local products. On Saturday as well, there's um, a, a concert event called the Angry Samoans along with the Gutter Poetry. Excuse me. <laughs> That'd be great fun. <laughs> what is Gutter go Poetry? To, I don't know, but we're going to have to find that at, out. So, and then, you know, just anything to help us maintain a quality of life that uh, makes life worth living. Thank That's you, right. Local Living, for this. That's right. That's correct. As a matter of fact, uh, just recently, uh, they did a they did a, a special on here. That, uh, <laughs> hey, coming in. Who is it? Oh, we're just, I went to silence the phone. It might be somebody you know. No, Local Living is, um, they... They have vouchers. Yeah. So we went into, we were on the streets with the greatest race of, on the city streets. Of the city streets racing, of Lancaster. Streets of Lancaster. And while we were on the boulevard, slipped into nothing but bling because I had a local living voucher to have a lot of fun with there at nothing but bling. And while we were there, um, you took a moment uh, to, to interview uh, the owners uh, about, about their, their being with local living and how successful it has been for them. Business owners love it because you get to meet new people. Your regular people love to support you because they, in turn, can pass these amazing deals to loved ones just like we do. It's my little random act of kindness as I move through the community is to pass out these vouchers because they are so valuable and rewarding. And then you get to go meet who's right in your own neighborhood. I have two vouchers for Terry Faye's Soul Food, which that deal's already gone, but we know... Terry Faye Soul Food right on 15th West and J8. We'll videotape a piece about them, too. The best kept secret over there. Oh, they're so generous and loving, and the food is made with love. So let's go uh, to Nothing But Bling and to see, because you spent, you had a voucher for $20. I had a voucher for $20. Cost you 10 bucks. I paid 10 bucks for it. I had a voucher for 20 thinking, you know, a little boutique that I would end up spending another 10 bucks or so to come away with something. That made my heart sing, and then was absolutely delighted. So here you go, check it out. Okay. Hello, Antelope Valley. I'm Marva Greenleaf, and I love the value of a great deal, and I love discovering the amazing niches of creativity. Blooming where you're planted is the key, isn't it, Michelle? Yes, yes. Blooming where you're planted. And so when Nothing But Bling uh, participated with Local Living, and I was able to get $20 worth of merchandise at Nothing But Bling for a $10 investment. So immediately I doubled my money. First time I've been in the store. So here we are. The races are going on the on the streets of Lancaster. The face, the fastest streetcar race in the country. All these amazing little shops, neighbors, Michelle and her husband. Oh, okay, okay, so the mouses are crazy in, in, in the loop today. Sorry about that, uh, but we'll work it out. Um, but now we're back here live because she was an amazing lady and just really, it's good to see these businesses that are coming up out of, out of the ruins, you know? Oh, it's and it's teamwork. It's husbands and wives. So her husband was behind the counter, you know, packaging. I, I found a, a blouse. It's a great little layering summer top. And it wasn't even, it's, I ended up paying 12 cents more. So for $10.12, I got this amazing summer accessory and, um, and just got to know this couple who have brought their heart right onto the boulevard. And so her husband was packaging it up and doing the tissue paper just the way she likes it, putting it in the bag just the way that she likes it. That's pretty. Oh, well, you know, it's good to please your woman, and we do see the color and the beauty. And 
we try not to make it so detail oriented that we suck the life out of it. Now, I know there's an event coming up that that your heart your heart's in, and uh, this is this this weekend over at Chris Biker's um, with Gail Manu, Menard, Manag. What is it? Gail Minogue. Okay, so so um, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Gail Minogue. Mm -hmm. Saturday, Carmageddon Day, full moon. Saturday from one to four. Wow. We have a, we have a three hour workshop with Gail Minogue at Chris and Laura Spiker's home here in Lancaster, and she is. Uh, it's it's titled the Invisible Plan because she um, is a master of the sacred art of geometry using the ancient teachings of cycles and symbols of numbers. And she is just, she, she lives it, she, that, that's her message. She's been a commodities broker since 1987. So um, what I know about mystics is that they have a foot in both worlds. They're able to be in the world and not of it. And then she helps to shine light. So this is trends and forecasts from 2012 to 2024. 12 year cycles, seven year cycles, 120 year cycles, 240 year cycles. There's all these cycles that we go through in the divine laws. And she's gonna just give us confidence about the unknown that we're all swimming in right now. A lot of confusion. I wanna thank Dennis, uh, Dennis uh, Laura Spiker uh, for bringing us to the Elmo Valley. And she's done my numbers, she's done your numbers. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, how it is. Of course, you know, she knows it's pretty good, so maybe, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but let's go now, because we had an opportunity to go down to Beverly Hills. Uh, Chris Spiker um, uh, is going to introduce her to you, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on this Saturday. Invisible plan. From one to four. Still seating available. Okay, here you go, everybody. Chris Spiker, Antelope Valley Florist, AV Nice. Today we're talking with Gail McNogue about coming to the Antelope Valley September 29th. So we're going to ask her a few questions. What's happened in America? What's happening in America? Well, these some of these things I'm going to be including at this workshop. Um, um, it's some of it based on a lot of this ancient information that there is no accident here. Yeah. And America has gone through a major, major change that began about 2007. But it's been in the works since uh, about 30 years. So we have major cycles and we have major cycles within cycles. So I like to take a look at what has happened and what has really happened to America is we are revisiting the time of America's birth. So we're going back 200, about 240 years and we are looking at everything that we did, how far we've come, what have we done wrong, what do we need to correct, it's a house cleaning. Um, it's look, taking a look at where we need to go forward and what we need to eliminate. So, is there a divine plan yes. or is it all just yes. luck? Or? Yes. No, um, the United States of America is what I call the experimental station. And it was placed here by what we call a group of people who are part of what, my, what another word would be a very hierarchy system that began in Europe, began in Europe hundreds of years ago before they ever landed here. But it was began with the idea that they would be an experiment to develop the individual. Because at that time, we had a collective individual. We had no individual, we had a collective of people around the world. And the rights of the individuals were completely ignored. So this was the experimental station for it. And it's gone through its cycles, it's gone through its challenges, it's gone through wars and civil wars and depressions and um, civil rights and all kinds of things. And it's under these specific cycles that things will be activated at certain times, like the crash of the financial system. Every financial system is approximately 28 years. So we finished one in 2008 and we're in the bottom of a brand new financial cycle. I will go over that during the workshop so you can see what the, um, the uh, the top of that cycle will be, and you can plan accordingly what's happened to the housing market as well, but it's all within this 28-year cycle. So this is a crash of some sort, um, an exposure of some sort. There are things that are happening now that have not happened in 240 years. Wow. I look forward to having people come to this talk. Yeah. It's on September 29th. Correct. That's September a 29th, Saturday, 
in Lancaster, and it's from 1 to 4 p.m. 1 to 4 p.m. And I will be going over a lot of this in detail. If you want to know more about your jobs, should you change jobs, the cities that are affected more, yeah. all of these things are going to be covered. Because in this event, you take questions from the audience. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I'll yeah. be delivering lots of information in these key areas, which I get asked all the time. Well, good. Yeah, over and over. Okay. But thank you. Thank you for having so, me. Chris Spiker from AV Nice having a wonderful conversation with Gail Minogue. Thank you. The Invisible Plan. Hey, no, the audio is great. <laughs> yes, it is. But the picture uh, looked like this and then it would Thank God for archives and uh, YouTube and uh, just a variety of sources where you can see the videos without interruption. So Saturday, 1 to 4. If you go to Gail Minogue, how do you spell that? Gail Minogue. G-A-I-L-M-I-N-O-G-U-E. Gail Minogue. There's still some seats available. Um, and just come and, and be informed and get a little bit greater clarity of your own unique contribution at this shift in society and humanity and our globe, all for the greater good. All right, now, it's it's autumn, so I've been feeling a little bit more congested, people talking about sinuses and respiratory and all kinds of ways to uh, just feel a little worn down as the seasons change. So we hear about the flu shots um, again and again and again. There are a lot of different ways to undergird yourself for the flu and cold season. This is one. It is emergency. It's a thousand milligrams of vitamin C along with other immune boosters. It's known as emergency. It's known as the champagne of nutritional drinks. The champagne. The champagne of nutritional drinks because it bubbles. Oh, there you go. It bubbles beautifully. And then in this glass of water, you have a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. You see, it's sparkling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it truly is the champagne of nutritional drinks. So this is one way of boosting yourself. And where'd you get that at? Oh, the, uh, emergency is readily available anywhere. It usually comes in a box of thirty-six. Mm -hmm. No, the whole weedery is one area. It's one place to get it, but it really truly is available everywhere. I even in the A.M. P.M. It's emergencies. Yeah. Uh, it's a powdered drink, and it comes in different flavors, and you just pour it right into a bottle of water, a glass of water, and you've instantly given yourself a boost. We like to support our businesses, though, that support us. So go to Whole Weedery and get it. The Whole Weedery has it by the box, 36 packets. It's about 9 bucks for a box. You get 36 packets. Um, vitamin C is water-soluble, so when you're feeling under the weather, you could take a packet every other hour and really give yourself a radical boost when you're feeling um, worn down is not the time to be conservative with your food and, and, and supplements. Um, so vitamin C, 10 to 12,000 milligrams in a day when you're feeling worn down. And Linus Pauling discovered that many years ago. So cheers to you, good health all through the year, four seasons out of the year. You hear about ginger and garlic and echinacea, <coughs> the flu remedy, which is a homeopathic remedy, um, is available all over the place, too, certainly at the whole weedery. With preventative medicine, you don't want to wait until you have coughed and sniffed and ached for two days. And the respect of your divine design of your instrument is to recognize immediately when you're uh, needing more support in whatever area it is. So if you're starting to sniffle and feeling a little worn down, don't wait until it tumbles into something more serious. Be proactive and undergird yourself on a daily basis. That's true. Maintain your well-being. That's right. Maintain it well. <laughs> and uh, uh, that that's what it's all about. you got to walk toward life. you got to get up, get out of bed. You know, the choices you got, you might as well make a positive one. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Now, seeing the positive choices, uh, this week, our, our good buddy uh, Bob Turner is spreading out there on the Internet. His wife, uh, the head cook over there at the Atlantic Center. What's going on there this weekend? The Greek Chronicles is happening. We've already talked, told us. Yeah. 
So yeah, Where was I? Toga this Saturday. I just want to reemphasize it, I guess. The Hellenic Center is doing the Greek Greek Chronicles, um, and then the Valley Oasis event is what? happening. What's going as well. on? What's going on? Valley Oasis. <laughs> Let's, I'm going to try. Yeah, you're going to try that video. Mm -hmm. Valley Oasis has their September event to benefit the Domestic Violence Council uh, for our community. And that's a very real epidemic, this thing called domestic violence. We human beings, we tend to swing between either being victimized or victimizing. Well, it's a roller coaster, it isn't, you know, if it's like this, forget it. <laughs> and we are all learning in the school of life. But how we communicate and then uh, bring out the best in relationship. So when you find yourself literally physically in a world of hurt, domestic violence doesn't typically begin with physical violence. It begins long before with emotional and verbal abuse. And the physical violence is the last of uh, the effects of it. So if it begins emotionally and verbally, then it is a slide into the physical abuse. So as an individual, I learned to uh, be fully responsible with my words and actions and intentions so that I can walk a whole different path. Jim it's a journey. Andy, it's a journey. We walk a whole different path without it being um, victimizing or being victimized. It's a very unique individual, self-respect, uh, Okay, we're, we're going to see if Discovery. the squirrels squirrels are fixed or not. We, we did a wonderful piece that we went to last year. It was at the Lane Ranch. What a wonderful, marvelous place that is. The Lane Ranch, they had it last year up in Leona Valley. This year is at the Antelope Valley University on Sierra Highway. Saturday night, Valley Oasis basket auction, delicious meal. Check it out, delicious. Yeah, so we're going to go right now to a recap of last year because we were there filming uh, Teresa Dawson and uh, Michelle... Um, Michelle, uh, Johnson, isn't it? No, no, no. Michelle, we Flanagan. love you. Michelle Flanagan. Flanagan, we see you. Michelle, you're so plugged into this community. Oh, look at this. Oh, Grandma's pulling up. <laughs> okay, so if it's... I'm going to get her some juice. If, if it's messing up, if it's messing up, then, then I'm going to come back. No, or, yeah, close your eyes and listen to it. <laughs> to introduce a very special person in my life, her name is Teresa Dawson. She's actually the president of the board of directors of the shelter itself, and she has been for quite some time. She is... Absolutely an inspiration to me. I am on the board of directors with her, and, and it's humbling with the amount of effort that she... Hey, we're back here live. Uh, see a little Grandma's in the house. Come over here, Grandma. I was saying, we were talking Valley Crest earlier. I'll get you some juice. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Well, good. See, there you are. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, gee, I look old. No. Well, you look about 25. Yeah. Plus yeah. So so so, how's your blood sugar? Fine. Okay. Did you measure this morning? Yeah. Okay. Take your shot. Yeah. Okay. So you feeling okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Yeah. I had the blender going right now for you, because because we we do this juice every day. Grandma comes by to have her to have her juice. It's not really juice. It's a smoothie with nothing but raw vegetables in such a form that you just drink it. Yeah, and it's good for me. It keeps me moving. It does keep you moving. Yeah, it does. So how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Did you get lucky you. last night? No. Oh. No. Darn. I had to stop by the I bank this would. morning. Did yeah. you get a lot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the Williams I, died. I, that's right, he did. I remember, I remember growing up, you used to have me sit in front of that TV and watch him. Yeah. He had a, he had a variety show. Yep, it was good. It was good. I, I, I believe you said one day at that point, he could park his shoes under my bed anytime. You suppose I said that. I think you did. He never did. He never did. <laughs> nope. Interesting. So, uh, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, nothing. Why? I just want to play some playing bingo. Probably. Okay, good, good, good. Uh -huh. Probably. So we talked about Andy Williams because we used to watch a variety show together growing up, and she would say this He can park his shoes under my bed anytime. You know, for, for my mother, it's Tom Jones. Yeah. So, <laughs> so why don't you sit down here and talk to Mom? Well, you know, I would love to talk to Joanne. Jim? See, he thoroughly convinced me that... Um, to scoot over as far as you can that way. You have a busy day today? No, Joanne. This is the highlight of my day. That and the Valley Press. <laughs> Look at here. This who delivers our paper to us is Joanne Greenleaf. We were praising them, you know, for just 
seeing them around and what they've contributed to the community all these years. How long have you subscribed to the Valley Press? Over 20 years. Easily over 20 oh, years. Yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with the change with all the technology, you know, more and more of us are getting our news online. So the hard copy isn't as, you know, necessary. And I know for a business like the Valley Press, it's, it's a continual ec challenge mm -hmm. to try to figure out, you know, what, how to, to reshape and adjust as we step into this new land that we're in. I personally believe it's the land of and, Joanne Greenlee. We are in the land of and. There's room for the hard copy, room for the, for the internet, and we'll just go forward together. I have to go by the Senior Expo and sign up for next year because if you sign up there at the Expo, you get something when you sign up. I don't remember what it is. What, now, is the Senior Expo happening? Yeah, October 4th, I think it is. October 4th, I everything think. senior. Okay. Everything senior expo over at the fairgrounds. Boy, seniors know how to show up. And those goodie bags. You betcha. You <laughs> go, go around and around and get everything. <laughs> but, you know, Bob Finberg, who's one of the sponsors of Lancaster Insurances, he is aware that there's going to be open enrollment for Medicare um, in November which means pre-existing conditions aren't considered. It's open enrollment for everyone. So we just are going to keep bringing out the best in each other. What Joanne is drinking, the, the juice of the day, if you put a, a banana and some apple juice, it really has got a great mm -hmm. flavor, doesn't yeah. it? It's yummy. It's yummy. This is beet and kale and okra. Thank you, Sister Margaret, for the okra. And all of it is excellent for alkaline, balance in your system, uh, pancreas support, liver support, heart support. This is the best fuel of the day, isn't it, So that's Joanne? why I'm in good shape. Huh? That's why you are looking great for 140. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Love and bingo. Have you been winning? No. Oh, I'm going to have to do the money dance. Yeah, that's right. See, you haven't been dancing enough, Joanne. <laughs> We'll do that <laughs> after we end the show. We'll do that little dance. <laughs> dance of abundance is what we call it. So, but it's only going to get warmer, isn't it? Yes, it is. But it's nice right now. Oh, it's, it's been beautiful. so pleasant. I had to put on something a little bit warmer. We will have a Valley Oasis event at the Antelope Valley University on a Saturday. The Greek Chronicles is happening on Saturday. The Invisible Plan is happening on Saturday. Um, Angry Samoans and Gutter Poetry is happening on Saturday through local living. So much to do. So much of life to be lived and experienced. Make it a good day. And um, we'll see you next week. Our life today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.